conversation about it. Representatives down here. Okay. Would you like to approach it and uh, add a little bit more to it? I would. <laughs> a little bit about today um, was what's been going on at the shelter um, and um, request for your help. So the first page, um, if we can just flip through very quickly, I won't take too much of your time, um, is our intake um, stats. As you can see, most of our, well, over half of our animals do come from the county. And this is reflective of January through December. However, when I started in April uh, last year, um, they were not accepting county animals, which I changed um, when I started. So the county animals are actually April through December that you're seeing. Now the next page is the cost of care that it would take to maintain the animals at the shelter. Um, the I broke it down for you between cats and dogs. Um, the top box is the 10 day minimum stay. That's if everything went perfect. Um, they go for their, their vaccines, their testing, and they get adopted right away. Um, the <coughs> box below it is 118 day stay. That's worst case scenario, so there is a range there. Um, if they were to stay um, the longest, which is generally four months before they get adopted. Um, the next page is uh, the dog intake. Dogs turn around quite a bit faster at the shelter um, in comparison to cats. They also um, have testing they go through, they get their vaccines. Um, they take a little bit more time and labor because we do temperament tests. Um, before we put the animals out in the community, we want to make sure that they're solid animals and they're not threatening or not don't pose a threat to the public. Um, the average, the longest stay for dogs is generally about a month and a half. So our dogs turn around quite a bit faster than our, than our cats. Um, out of the, the animals that we did receive from the county, um, the average, uh, how do I say this, 52% of the, the cats were considered unadoptable, which means they were euthanized. Um, two reasons that that's such a big number for cats in 2011 is because we responded to a hoarding situation in South Whitley, which there was 49 cats that came from there. Um, 39 of them were considered unadoptable or too sick to be adopted. 24% um, of the dogs um, did not pass their temperament test. So um, overall, so that does take the number down a little bit as far as the cost of care that we do um, incur. There is still euthanasia cost. Um, you know that that is an expense. It's about 20 to 40 dollars per animal, depending on their size, their weight, things like that. <coughs> so what, um, what are we seeing in the community? On average, we receive about three calls per week requesting that we go out and pick up animals. Um, <coughs> about 156 calls per year. Um, we only were able to respond to about 15 last year. Um, and we only respond to the ones that are an emergency, where the people feel that they're threatened. Um, it's really not something that, that we can respond to routinely because we are restricted on funding resources. Um, so most of the time what we do is refer those calls to the Sheriff's Department. And last year the Sheriff did, um, the Sheriff's Department did take 272 calls. Um, but currently they're not allowed to transport the animals to the shelter. Um, so that, that is a problem um, that we see in the community um, and that we anticipate is going to grow larger. So on those 272, what did they do? Um, according to the code, um, they have the option to um, retain the animal, bring it in, or destroy it. What do they do? 
Well, what they've told the people uh, that they respond to is that they either can, the, the people can actually bring the, the animals to the shelter or they can shoot it, shoot the animals. Is that what they do most of the time or what? I'm not sure. I can't, I can't say for them. Here again, that was back in the trustees' hands when they got, you had a dog or something that got out of hand, got in the livestock, so it was Don wanted to enable the trustees could could go out there and take care of that dog. That's when you collected the dog tax. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some of the things that we are doing, um, we did receive a grant from the Community Foundation for spaying and neutering animals. So um, what we are going to do is target the hotspot areas in the, in the county and the city, um, one being the mobile home park, Miami Village. Um, right now there's estimated to, about, to be about 200 cats in that area. Um, so what we are going to do is set up a spay neuter program with them um, next month and hopefully get the populations like that under control. So we're trying to take a proactive approach to prevent these animals from coming into the shelter, to prevent the unwanted litters um, in the community. Um, we do other things as far as reaching out to the community, as far as kids club. Um, we do have once a month kids club that um, we have kids come in and we teach them about animals. Um, we do have behavior classes for dogs. Um, so we're really working on being a place of knowledge for the community, not just a place where animals are housed. Um, every year we struggle financially to maintain the minimum level of care for animals and um, we do have a lot of great donors, we do have a lot of support from the community, but we are coming to you to request financial support because over half of the animals that we do receive are from the county. Ultimately the goal is to um, <coughs> You know, give those animals a second chance to be a voice for them. Um, we do look at a lot of our programs, and when I did start in April um, last year, I reviewed everything. And we, what, one of the things that we did change was um, how our animals are adopted. We made it a lot easier for people to adopt animals, and I think that's why we are, are having such a good success rate in getting our animals adopted. Um, so some of the rules that, that changed is Animals can be outdoors, obviously, you can have outdoor pets, um, and you can also have one unaltered animal per household and um, to eliminate the intent of breeding. Um, also, the owners that, when, when animals do come into the shelter, owners that do reclaim them, they do have to abide by the state uh, rabies vaccine requirement law. So these are just some of the things that we're doing um, to try to make our community a better place and to um, increase the health and, health and awareness of the animals that we do have. How is your fee structure? I think I re recall a long time ago that it didn't seem like they were charging enough for bringing in animals. Have you, you know, if somebody drops off an animal that they no longer want, you charge them for that? We do, it, it is $50 for an owner surrender. So that is that competitive with what it's, other shelters charge? It's actually a more than other shelters okay. charge. Um, Fort Wayne doesn't charge anything. Warsaw, um, I don't think they charge anything either. So, um, but in the surrounding area, going at a greater distance, they do charge. It's more like twenty-five dollars. Um, but my thing, I guess, and our, our view is, if you're going to not be responsible for this animal, you have to give the best chance possible to get a new life to get adopted. What if I pick up a stray and bring? We'll ask for a donation. So we're not going to charge you um, a flat rate, but we will ask you for a donation. You are stopping and taking that animal out of goodness of your heart. I mean, the time that you take to bring the animal in. Um, so we do appreciate that. So we will ask for a donation in those situations. Does the city currently pay you anything? They do. What, what do they pay you? Twenty-five thousand. We get two installments: one in July, and one in December. They pay you twenty-five each, or half. Twenty-five, so half, half and okay. twelve point five. Twelve. 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 Twelve
Now, do they, um, could you guys pick up animals for them, that type of thing? Because they don't have an animal control officer. Well, their officers will bring them in. So they, okay. all of their officers are deemed animal control officers. Um, they have called us out uh, on a few occasions and we will go out and help them. Um, and same with the county, we will go out and help and assist in situations that, that we need to. So, yeah, the option is always there. Um, everyone has access to our van. Um, if they feel they can't transport the animal, they can come to our van. Um, they have access to the building. Do the communities of Terrebusco, South Whitley, and Larwell also contribute? They do. I do not know the exact amount um, off the top of my head, but I can, I can let you know. Any other questions or discussion? Have a minute. Well, I just, I just want to say that that uh, I, I, I really kind of hate for Lindsay to. <coughs> I've been around this group a long time. There's there's bad blood between this group and, and the humane shelter. Let's just don't take it out on Lindsay. She's <laughs> she has done a great job. I I'm not going to go back to the past. The past is the past, and and we need to move on and get over it. So I would ask you to please don't don't take anything any old feelings out on Lindsay. I think she's done a tremendous job, and I will tell you that there's. At least two. I will not speak for Commissioner Rethlake. He never said a word. But but I know Commissioner Schrumpf and myself feel like it's probably time for the county to step up to the plate and, and help the humane shelter. I will say that from being out in the state of Indiana that almost every budget I review has some form of animal control officer for county governments. We do not have that. And I almost feel like the county is taking advantage of a not-for-profit agency and, you know, we, we do what we can to make good decisions and uh, fair, being fair and objective to our citizenry and that should also include our businesses and our not-for-profits. And if they are doing county work, then they need to be compensated for that county work. That's my opinion. You said that do most of the other sheriff's departments um, do the animal pickup? Do you yeah, it's, know that? it's usually they have an animal control officer, officer. which is usually make, makes, you know, it's sometimes part time 25,000 to 35,000, yep, on call animal control officer who can, who is um, geared to go out and handle the animals, either bring them into a shelter. <clears throat> I mean, I think it is ridiculous that our we can't ha expect our sheriff's department to bring in animals and yet we expect the shelter to take care of those animals it's, it's, it's they don't take right. care of county animals they don't take care of county animals this we, thing says that they can't not they, bring them there they've been they'll take them if they're called and if the sheriff's department does it then they just dispose of them well i know but it says here that i thought i just read that the sheriff's department could not allow them could not bring them down there. Is that true? Oh no, they absolutely could. They could, yeah. They just choose not. Well, you're to. looking at it, Jim. That the humane shelter says they can't bring them there. That's not what it says. Uh -huh. It says the sheriff's department says we won't transport them. Yeah. That's different than it's the humane shelter job. saying we won't take them. The sheriff's department saying it's not their job. Their big thing is they don't want to put them in their vehicles. Yeah, that's right. And and the and the sheriff's officer, I I I'm going to defend that stand to be honest with you because. Sheriff's officers with canines, what, what are they, what well, are yeah, they supposed to do? Well, yeah, a canine officer couldn't have some, couldn't What, what have are some they, food. you know, they, 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 they can't. They just, they can't. But um, I don't know that I would advocate the, the county hiring a, a, an animal control officer. Yeah, I'm simply saying that I think the county should help support the humane shelter and let, and let them deal with how they, they get the animals right. in. We have a viable solution, and that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm not for hiring an animal control officer either. But here, you know, here we have an agency that we could work with to comply with the code, not inconvenience the sheriff deputies, and we're taking advantage of them and not compensating for that work mm -hmm. that they do. And as we go into our 2013 budget, these discussions should be during that time yes. also. Mm -hmm. 
the rest of that story, though, is the amount of money it takes to keep. Uh, I mean, you don't, by having someone to transport it to you, you don't solve your problem. And on that, I feel like we should just compensate for the county work that's being done, not, you know, we, we can't become a humane shelter. That's not our role. But it is our role to take care of the animals that are in the county county's jurisdiction. And there's got to be some kind of dollar amount that can be put on that work, yeah. that service. How many employees are down there now being paid? We have two full-time, myself included, and three part-time. So when I came on in April, um, I cut everything back. All the staff um, ran more efficiently. Um, we took a look at everything. And believe me, we are on a shoestring budget, and I am extremely cheap. So we do everything as cheap as we possibly can. I think we will go ahead and put this on our 2013 budget discussions and go from there. Are you going to be able to operate through this year? Yes. Okay. Lindsay, did you have a dollar amount that you thought would be good for the number of animals that are brought to you by the county? Um, well, based off of the numbers that um, I had given you for 2011, um, if we figured out the, um, the cost of care plus the cost of the ones that we did euthanize, um, the amount comes to twenty-four thousand. Um, that's, you know, I, I understand that's a large amount, and we'll be happy to be flexible. I think you ought to make a budget request for what you want, not just discuss of what you need. You know, I'd also like to know what South Whitley, Cherubusco, and Larwell are, are providing when you come back. Okay. <coughs> Okay, well, thank you for your time, and I would love for you guys to stop down and, and take a tour and see the shelter and see what we've done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.